Blessings, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us for another session of Measured Faith. Amen. I hope you all have had a blessed week thus far. I hope your day has been blessed. Hey, Deidre, good to see you. God bless you, cousin. Love you. I hope you have had a blessed day thus far. Um, um, I pray that you know, God's blessing, his peace, his joy is up on you. Hey, Sister Debbie, good to see you. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you all for joining so promptly. Um, we're going to pray here in just a second. I'm going to give everybody just a couple more seconds to get on. We're going to go in um, to this lesson that God has us has for us tonight. Hey, Sister Pamela, God bless you. Good to see you. Let me know how you're doing in the chat, if you would. If your day been good, let me know. If you're having a rough time, just say I'm hanging in there. And if you're uh, um, uh, barely getting by, just uh, 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 throw your hands up. Uh, uh, put pray for me. Put 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 praying hands in there. If you need me to pray for you, and we're going to pray, and I'll be covering you all throughout the week. So if you're doing good and Everything is well put. I'm blessed, highly favored. Y'all know how we do. And if you are maybe having a little rough time, amen, put I'm making it. But if you need prayer, I want you to put some praying hands in the comment. And let me know how you're doing so that I can know how to um, 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 cover you as we go throughout our days and weeks. Amen. Hey, Mom, love you. Good to see you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you once again with an attitude of gratitude, just thanking you for allowing us to gather together on this cyberspace, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have brought people from all different nationalities from across your planet Earth, Father God, from state to state, Lord God. I thank you for everyone who's watching this video and who will watch it later. I just speak a divine blessing on each one of their lives, on each one of their families and everything that may be connected to them, Father God. I pray that before we even go into this lesson tonight, I pray that you would touch every person, Father God, in a special, unique, divine, supernatural way, Father God, who views this live, whether now, Father God, or in the near future, Father God, whenever that may be, I speak a special, divine, supernatural blessing over their lives. I pray that you will release that thing that they have been asking and praying and seeking and trusting you for. Father God, I just feel in my spirit, Father God, that someone is stepping out, Father God. God on a measured faith, Father God, that they've never, on the measure of faith that they've never stepped out on before. Someone is believing you for something that they never believed you before. So as we, Father God, come together for this hour of measure of faith, measured faith, I pray, Father God, that you will release those blessings unto them in your own unique way, according to your own perfect divine will for their lives. Now, as we gather together, Father God, we submit ourselves and surrender our attention unto you. We ask and pray that you would speak to us like never before. Remove all distractions and anything that would try to get in the way from us soaking up this word. Let our minds, let our souls, let our spirits, Father God, be a spiritual sponge tonight and soak up this word that you have given given us, perfect that which concerns us, give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a will to obey. And we'll be so ever careful to bless your holy name. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. We claim it done and we say amen, amen, and amen. Hey, Sister Sandra, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Did you say she is still on vacation? You better go, girl, on vacation and logging in. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you for taking just a few minutes out of your vacation to log in. I don't know how long we're going to be on here tonight. I don't plan on being on here long at all. It may be one of the shorter lessons because uh, I just got some stuff I want to say that God wants to stay through and get right to the point. And we're going to go ahead on with our evening and meditate on what God has to say. Amen. So we have been in the book of Romans. We finished up Romans uh, chapter 12 last week. Amen. We was talking about love in action and talking about being uh, 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 renewed in our mind and being a humble service unto the body. Body of Christ. Amen. This week, I'm going to start in chapter 13, if you would. And I'm going to start to read. I don't know how far I'm going to read, but wherever the, we stop is where we stop. And we're just going to deal with chapter 13. Amen. Hey, Sister Patrice, God bless you. Good to see you. 
uh, the word of the Lord reads as follows in uh, chapter 13 of the book of Romans. It says, let everyone, I am reading out of the NIV version. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which, have, which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment upon themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for the rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but as a matter of conscience. I'm just going to stop right there. Romans 13, my brothers and sisters, deals with the topic that a lot of us are afraid to talk about. A lot of us don't want to hear. A lot of us don't want to do sometime. Amen. Tonight, we are going to talk about about submission. Amen. Tonight we are going to talk about being submitted in this life that we live. I know submission for us and being submitted in that word right there for some of us is offensive. We consider that as a cuss word. We don't want to talk about being submitted because submission makes us vulnerable to people. Being submitted uh, 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 makes us accept things that we may not want to accept, Sister Wynonna. Being submitted causes us to yield to a certain person or a certain thing or a certain rule or a certain principle. Being submitted and, and, and it puts us in a position that, um, 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 that we can experience some things that we don't want to experience, that, 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 that we can go through some stuff that we don't really want to go through, that we have to face some stuff that we don't really want to face. Submission is 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 not easy in um, any sense of the word, but at, but it, uh, on the same note, it's not necessarily hard. Amen. It can be challenging at times, but hear me here. Good godly submission is the best thing that we can have and participate and submit to. Amen. I understand. Uh, 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 that we have a problem with submission because oftentimes some people have abused their authority. And we're going to talk about that. We have submitted unto people and they've done us wrong. We submitted unto people, they mistreated us. We submitted unto them, they still left us. They still hurt us. They still got over on us. Amen. And we submitted to their ways. And then some people we submitted to and they had no good intentions. They had ill will from the beginning. Amen. But in spite of all of that, I want you to know that submission is a part of God's plan. Submission, my brothers and sisters, is a part of God's plan. In other words, submission is of God. Amen. All throughout the Bible. If we look throughout scripture, all throughout the Bible, the Bible talks about being submitted unto God or being under submission or or, or it, 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 it talks about submission from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The book of James 4 and, say, 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee. This is why I said submission is of God, because submission unto God, whenever we submit unto God, it gives us the ability to resist the devil. Hear me here. We cannot resist the devil if we have not submitted unto God. A lot of times we try to fight the devil and we have not submitted unto God. And that's why we end up getting whooped and whipped every single time. Why? Because we want to rebuke the devil, but we haven't submitted to the will of God. James says we must first submit unto God. And when we submit unto God, we'll have the power, hear me here, to resist the devil. Stop trying to rebuke the devil out of your life 
and, and, and off of your life and out of your marriage and all that type of stuff and off of your finances and off of your children and you're not living a submitted life unto God. Submission is of God. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, God said, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. In other words, God says he rewards us, Sister Demetria, God bless you. He rewards us, hear me here, according to our obedience, according to our submission unto him. He said, I search your mind. He said, I examine your heart and I reward you according to how you have submitted unto me. Job encouraged us. Look at Job, all that Job went through. Job encourages us in Job 22 and 21. Job says, submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Now look at here. This is Job in Job chapter 22. He's lost his family. He's lost, he's lost, he's lost his, his, his riches, his gold. And yet still in the book of Job, in the book of Job, sister y Yolanda, in the, um, 22nd chapter in the 21st verse, it says, submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. So submission not only brings about blessings and protection, but it brings about prosperity. So some of us hasn't been, haven't been prosperous in our lives, whether it's in our careers, in our finances, in our marriages. Some of us haven't been prosperous, hear me here, simply because Job says we haven't submitted unto God. First Peter 5 and 6, I'm going to give you scripture here. First Peter 5 and 6 says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the right hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. Submission is of God. When we submit to God, we humble ourselves under the hand of God. And because we are uh, have humbled ourselves and submitted ourselves under God, hear me here, when we are down, he will lift us up. When we've fallen, he will pick us up. When we've done wrong, when we submit ourselves, he'll right our wrongs. So submission, hear me here, brings about exaltation. My God, thank you, Holy Spirit. I said submission brings about exhortation. God says, if you humble yourself, I will exalt you. If you submit yourself unto me, I will build you up. Amen? That's good stuff. So submission. When we look at the word submission, we understand that submission is of God. Submission brings about exhortation. So when we say that we have to submit unto God, submission, hear me here, is derived of two words, sub and mission. Hear me here, follow me here. Submission comes from two words, amen? It's a compound word. Sub meaning under and mission meaning something that God gives us. So in other words, whenever God tells us that we are to submit, it means that we are to come under sub mission under the mission of God. Woo, my God. I'm going to say that again. We should submit unto God because when we submit unto God, we come under submission and submission means, sub means under and then mission. So we come under the mission of God. What are you saying? Like we come under of uh, 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 um, God's mission for our lives when we submit unto him. Submission, under, submarines, sub, submarines, submarines are under, submerge, submission. We come under the protective care and covering of God and we submit to his will. We come under God's mission for our lives, Sister Mary. And so God says he has a plan for us and we have to submit to his plan. We have to come under his plan for our lives. Now let's, 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 let, let's be honest here. This is, this is measured faith. We're all real here. We're all transparent and we keep it 100 here. Oftentimes it's hard to submit. Let's just be honest. Because our flesh doesn't want to submit. If the truth be told, we quote, hear me here, the 23rd Psalms. 
We have no problem in quoting the 23rd Psalm. I'm pretty sure everybody on this live who's going to watch this live or who's watching this live right now can quote the 27th Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, he, I, I, we, we know the song. We know this. He prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod, and thou staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table. I mean, we, we, we know this. But my thing is, we want God to prepare a table before for us in the presence of our enemies. We want God to lead us beside still water. We want goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives. We want God to, 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 to bless us and be our shepherd. But in order for God to lead us beside still waters, in order for God to bless us, in order for God to keep us, in order for God to prepare a table for us, in order for goodness and mercy to follow us, hear me here, we must first come under the mission of the shepherd. This is why David said in the 23rd Psalm, Sister Leslie, the Lord is my shepherd. The first thing that he said is the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, I am submitted unto him I am in submission unto him. So I have come under the mission of the shepherd. And because I'm under the guidance or the mission of the shepherd, he now leads me. But where there is no submission, hear me here, there is no leading. We can't just ask God or Jesus Christ, hear me here, to be our savior and not our Lord. See, we want to confess that Jesus Christ is our Savior so that we can reap and benefit of the blessings that he gives his children. But not only, hear me here, does God want to, or Jesus Christ want to be our Savior, hear me here, he also wants to be our Lord. That's why he's Lord first and then he's saved. He's Lord and Savior, because when he's Lord, it means that he has reign over our lives. It means that he has a plan for our lives. And because he has a plan for our lives, we come under his mission. Amen. Am I making sense here tonight? We must be submitted unto God. Dr. Darius Daniels once said, that there are three, 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 three things or three people that we're going to submit to. We're going to submit to culture. We're going to submit to the church. Or we're going to submit to God. We're going to do it culture's way. We're going to do it the church's way. Or we're going to do it God's way. The, the culture way, which is my way, is a way that sinks us. The church's way is a way that that actually, I would say, um, 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 stagnates us. Well, the church's way helps us to survive. Culture's way, hear me here, sinks us. The church's way helps us to survive. But God's way helps us to thrive. I'm going to say that one more, one, one more again, if you would. I said the culture way causes us to sink. The church's way causes us to survive, but God's way causes us to thrive. So whose way are we going to do it? I'm not necessarily saying that the church is wrong, but I don't want to just survive. I want to do it God's way so that I can thrive. Amen? So my first point is this submission is a part of God's plan. The second thing I have to ask you now. So, 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 so let me let me slow down here because I just I just thought of something. If submission is of God's plan, why is it so hard 
for us to submit to those in authority. Or can I get more personal? To our bosses, to our parents, or can I get real? Can, can I can I can I lean in a little bit? Why is it so hard for us to submit in relationships? It talks about this. If submission is of God, the Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 21, submit one to another out of reverence for Christ. Ephesians 5 and 21. It says submit one to another out of reverence for Christ. So wives, you're to, to, to submit to your husband. That's what the verse, the um, second verse says. 22, I'm, I'm sorry. Ephesians 5, 22 says, wives, submit to your husbands as as to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the church, which is the savior of all. So here it is. Let me say this. Satan's, let me see how to put this. One of the biggest tricks of Satan, which is actually my third point, so I'm gonna tie my second and my third point together. One of Satan's greatest tools that he uses against us, hear me here, is to make submission look unattractive. One of Satan's greatest tools is to make submission look unattractive. And so this is why Wives, hear me here, sometimes have a hard time submitting to their husbands. So let me say this. I'm not jumping on the wives right now because the husband has to submit unto the wife. The Bible says submit unto each other. But what I've noticed is that a lot of times wives have a hard time submitting to the husband. The husband has a hard time submitting unto the wife, but you know why? Because neither are truly submitted unto God. So let me say this. If you are unmarried, do not ever submit. Remember, submission means coming under the mission. Never marry a man Hear me here, wives, future wives, future wives. If you're already married, you, you, you're in trouble. You're going to have to work this out. You're going to take some points from me tonight. If you are unmarried, do not marry a man who does not have a vision to lead the family. Whew. I'm going to say that because God has called you into submission. He's called you to submit to your husband. So single ladies. Never marry a man who does not have a mission from God. And if you are married, hear me here, make sure that the husband that you have has a mission from God, hear me here, so that you, Sister Tamika Harris, can submit to the mission. Sub means under, mission means of uh, 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 um, God's plan. What Satan wants, his tool that he used, he wants you, he wants to, to, to make submission unattractive. And so he points out things to wives and future wives that happen in other relationships well, wives had submitted unto men who dogged them out or who controlled them or who abused them. And so he wants to make you think that submission is a bad thing, Sister Emily. Because you know why? Satan understands the importance of submission. He understands the, the, the value when we are submitted unto God, to his mission, 
and to one another. And so whenever he can get you to believe or think that submission is unattractive, you will come into a relationship or a, to a marriage or go to your job and you won't want to submit to your boss because you think he or she is trying to control you. You don't want to submit to your husband or your fiance because you believe that he is controlling. Why? Because I seen him control. I seen my daddy do my mama like that. I seen my sister get done like that. I seen um, this boss treat one of my co-workers like that. So I'm not going to submit unto them. And this is one of Satan's greatest tools that he uses. He makes it look unattractive. Why? Because people have in the past abused their authority. And so when Paul tells us right here in the book of Hebrews to submit unto authority, the first thing that we say is, I'm not submitting unto them. They racist, they prejudiced. They don't like me. I don't like them. Why? Because I've seen how they treat other people. I've seen how she dealt with everybody else. I've seen how my father was treated. I've seen how my mother was treated. I've seen how my brother, my sister, my, my sibling was treated. I'm not going to let no man control me. But let me tell you something. Godly authority doesn't deal with control. It doesn't operate, rather, so, excuse me, it doesn't operate in control. Submission is not control, my brothers and sisters. And Satan wants, wants submission um, to look unattractive to you. So he plants these seeds in your mind and reminds you, hear me here, of how others who submitted to people, it looked like they were controlled or they were abused. And all of us, hear me here, if the truth be told, have the power to abuse the authority that we have been given. No matter what position we are in. One of the greatest books that I read that has blessed me over the 20 years I have been in ministry. One of the first books God led me to was a book by Bishop George Bloomer that was titled Authority Abuse. And I began to read the book 20 years ago when I first came into the ministry. I'll never forget. It taught me so much about authority abuse and how easy it is for us to abuse our authority. Pastors do it. Deacons do it. Ushers do it. Worship leaders do it. CEOs do it. Yes, ushers, that's why I say everybody can abuse some authority that they have. You, you can walk up to a church, <laughs> you can walk up to one of them church doors, and one of them old lady ushers, my God, is standing at that back door, and the pastor praying, or it's a certain point in the service, and you try to open up that door, whoo, man, that usher will slam that door and look back at you, and don't you come in this church. That's authority abuse. Because even though you're there, it's a way that you respond to people. Do you hear me? Do you see pastors abuse it? They get up and they want to preach this, have it and grab it. And if you sow a seed, because I preach this message and you sow a seed, prosperity is going to come to your house. That's authority abuse. You don't have to sow a financial seed for God to bless you. You sow a financial seed because it's a biblical principle. But I personally believe that I would abuse my authority if I tell you this is a good word. And if you want to be blessed by this word, you ought to send a $25 seed right now to my cash app. That's abusing the authority that God has given me on this platform. Now, it's different if I say, if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, 
to help me to continue the ministry and be a blessing and buy products and bless others. Or if you want to sow a seed in my life, that's different. But for me to tell you that if you want to be blessed as a pastor because I preach good, you need to give $25, $700. No, that's authority abuse. We all can abuse our authority. But listen here, when we submit unto God, God never ever abuses his authority. Who? Man may abuse their authority, but God never abuses his authority. So now put that question back up there for me, Deshanna. The question is this, who are you submitted to? Who are you under? This is why you have to be careful of who you marry. Don't marry somebody that you're not going to submit to. Because when you don't submit to your husband in the mission, the vision that God has given him, hear me here, what you do is you send a message unto him that I don't trust you to be the head of this matter. I don't trust you with my soul. I don't trust you with leading me. I don't trust you with our family. Hear me here, ladies. Did this? I'm trying to help you as a man. The worst thing that you could do is get into a marriage and not submit unto your husband. The, the, the first thing you, the first worst thing you could do, let me bang that up. The first worst thing that you can do is marry a man who doesn't have a mission. The first, the worst thing that the first worst thing that you can do is marry a man who's not submitted to God. Let me say it that way. Your first biggest mistake in entering into a marriage is marrying a man who is not submitted unto God. Because if he's not submitted unto God, he does not have a mission, submission. He has not come under the mission or the plan of God. But if you marry a man, who is a godly man and who is seeking the plan of God and the mission of God, hear me here, by godly command and principle, you are obligated to submit unto that man. Hear me here. He should not be controlling you. But he should be able to say, this is where I see us going. This is what I see us doing. This is what we need to do. This is what God is showing me. Hear me here. It doesn't mean that you don't think differently. It doesn't mean that you are not your own person. What it means is that we're two different individuals, but I trust him enough that he submitted and under the mission of God, that he's under the plan and direction of God, that even if I disagree because we're different, I'm going to submit to his to, to, to what he's saying, hear me here, because I believe in him. And now that I believe in him, hear me here, I'm not just going to sit by lackadaisically or, 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 or um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to have this laissez-faire attitude and just let things take its course. No, because I know the vision and the mission that he's on, I'm going to support him and I'm going to do my part, hear me here, in fulfilling the mission. Now, this is not necessarily giving gender roles. I'm giving you biblical principles to help you. Even in the church, I've seen people, and I don't know, I've seen people close to me who's kin to me sit at churches where they can't stand the pastor. Don't like the pastor. Old pastor who's been there 50 years, you loved him to death, he died off. New young pastor comes in, you can't stand. He wants to change this. He don't want to do this. We done it this way. We done it that way. Listen, 
if this is the pastor, the man of God, or the woman of God, that God has placed over this house of worship at this time, it is your obligation to submit to that leadership. And if you are not going to submit to that leadership that God has placed over that house of worship, you need to find another place of worship. But stop sitting in relationships where you're not going to submit to the uh, hand or to, to the husband or to the mission that God has uh, uh, um, given that marriage. Stop sitting in that relationship causing romantic hell. Yes, I said you, you are living in a romantic hell. You fuss, you argue, you fight. You cry, you're upset, you kick walls, you bust out windows, you don't speak to each other, you don't like each other. Hear me here. There comes a time where we have to be willing to submit, but the enemy makes submission look unattractive. But I come to tell somebody tonight, that Romans 13 tells us that submission is of God. So hear me here. The problem is not submission. Whew. The problem is who are you submitting to? <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The problem is not submission. Submission is of God. The problem is, who are you submitting to? Because oftentimes, if the truth be told, it's hard to, to submit to God. Even Jesus himself wrestled in his flesh with submission to the mission or the plan of God. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he looked up and he says, God, I know what mission you sent me on. I know what I came here for. I know what you sent me down through 42 generations for. But when it came time, when he seen that moment was getting close, when he could look and he had traveled everywhere he was supposed to travel, and the next place he was supposed to go, the next town that he was supposed to go to was Calvary. Woo! The next place he was supposed to uh, experience was Calvary. Woo! He thought about the mission that he was on and what he had submitted unto. And he went to God and said, wait a minute, God. I'm under your submission. I'm submitted unto you. But if it be your will, <laughs> take this cup of suffering away from me because I don't want to do this. Hear me here. Even Jesus in human nature, in his human form, in his human nature, wrapped in flesh, had a hard time at one point in his life with submission. So I understand that it's hard sometimes to submit unto the will of God. But when we submit unto the will of God, submission says, I trust you. Submission says, you have my life. Submission says, I believe in you. Submission says, I obey you. Submission says, you are the one for me. And whenever we submit unto God and say, God, I trust you. God, you are the only wise God. See, here it is, here it is. Submission, hear me here. Trust in God's plan, Sister Dorothy. Submission unto God's will says, God, you are wiser than I am. Submission says, God, I believe that you are really who you say you are. That you can do what your word really says you can do. I'm not only reading or quoting the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. I'm falling in alignment with you being my shepherd and leading me and guiding me. See, this is what submission says. Submission says, God, I trust your will. I trust your will. I trust your ways. I trust your plan. 
And so therefore, hear me here, I'm going to submit no matter how rough it gets. I'm going to keep on fighting a good fight of faith no matter how hard it gets. I'm going to stand in the midst of the storm, no matter who walks out on me, no matter who talks about me. Why? Because I trust you. I trust that you are wiser than I am, God. I trust that you're too wise to make a mistake. I trust that you're, that, that, that you're too infallible to get it wrong. So I'm feeling the pain. I'm feeling the disappointment. I'm feeling the hurt, but I'm submitted to your will. And I believe that you're too wise to get it wrong. You're too wise to make a mistake. See, we say that God is an omniscient God, that he's an all-knowing God, that he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. But submission unto him not only says that he is all-knowing, but submission unto him uh, 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 displays or proves that he's all-knowing unto us. That even whenever we don't understand, that we believe that because we're in God's plan, that God would never lead us where he won't protect us. That God will never guide us where he won't grace us. That God will never bring us to something that he will not bring us through something. Why? Because he's too wise. Why? Because I trust his plan. So whenever God tells me don't go, I'm submitted unto him. And I'm not going to go. When God tells me to do it, then guess what? I'm going to do it. Because I'm submitted unto him. Which brings me to my last point. Submission is not control. Woo. I said submission is not control. Submission, hear me here, is, is protective custody. <laughs> Dr. Daniel says it's a covering. Submission is God's protective covering. It's his protective order around you. He has placed you in his protective custody. And so he's not trying to, 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 I guess, restrict you from doing anything. He's trying to protect you. I'm going to say that again. God's not trying to restrict you. He's trying to protect you. There's a difference. He says, I know if you go over there and do that, I know what's going to happen. I'm not going to restrict you from doing it. If you choose to do it, do it. That's on you. You have a free will. But I'm trying to protect you and let you know that if you do that, this is going to cause some problems for you. I'm not trying to restrict you. You have your free will. Don't eat from the tree. But if you eat from the, I'm trying to protect you. Because if you eat from that tree, you are going to know some stuff that I never wanted you to know. You're going to be exposed to some stuff that I never wanted you to be exposed to. If you pick up that phone, if you send that text message, if you get in that car and go where you know you ain't supposed to go, you're going to cause some problems for yourself that are going to be so impactful in a bad way that you're going to have to suffer some consequences because of your action. So he says, I'm not trying to control you. I'm trying to protect you. My God, submission is God's covering. So that's why he says, wives, submit unto your husbands. Husbands, submit unto your wives. Husbands, submit unto the church. I'm, submit unto the Lord. 
Husbands, submit unto the Lord. Wives, submit unto your husbands. He says, because I have a covering, which is the marriage vow. And if you submit unto this, hear me here, you will never have to worry about divorce and that type of stuff in your marriage. Obey those who are in authority, your supervisors, your bosses, those who are at work. It says if you obey them, you don't have to worry about losing your job. Now, granted, there are some people in position who are bad, who should not be in leadership, who should not have that level of authority. That's when I say find you another church. Find you another job. Don't marry him or her if you can't submit to each other. But if you're going to be there, by biblical standards, hear me here, you are commissioned, you are obligated to submit in the way that God has called you to submit. Submission is not control. It's protective custody. It's us coming under the mission and the plans of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't let Satan make you think that submission is a bad thing. Don't let him plant that seed of unattractive submission inside of you. And you start to think about other people who submitted in some similar situation. And because they did it, and you've seen what happened to them, you're not going to do it. Let me tell you something. Satan wants you to view submission. Satan wants submission to be unattractive to you because he understands the importance and the rewards of submission. And he knows that if you ever submit to the will of God, that God will open up doors that no man can shut. He knows that if you ever fully submit unto God, that he will place you in places and positions that you have to look around and ask, how in the world did I get here? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in my eyes. Satan knows that if you ever fully submit unto God, that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't want have room that you won't have room enough to receive. See, we quote that, Sister Natasha. We quote Malachi three about God open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I won't have room enough to receive. Hear me here, but we that's talking about tithes, but we won't pay our tithes. Hear me here because we seen some pastor. Hear me here. Abuse and use the church's finances in a wrong way. And so now that type of submitting our tithes unto the church has become unattractive to us because we see a pastor misuse and abuse his position with the, fi with the church's finances but you are stagnating your growth and preventing your blessings if you do not tithe. It's a biblical principle. If you tithe, God said, I'll open the windows of heaven. Not the, the pastor can't bless you. But Satan wants you to feel that it's unattractive. He wants that to look unattractive to you. So you don't pay your tithes and your offerings. Because that pastor ain't getting my money. It's the Lord's money. It's God's money. It's not my money. Take it off the top. That's God's money. And I'm under, I'm submitted unto God. I'm under the mission of God. He wants submission to look unattractive to you in your relationship, in your marriage. He doesn't want you to submit to your husband. Because he knows that if you submit 
to your husband, if you fall under the mission, if you follow the plan that God has given that man, uh, man of God for your marriage, hear me here. If you follow that, he knows that your marriage is going to be so beautiful. He knows that you will have so much peace. He knows that y'all will grow. He knows that y'all will be examples and role models and a standard for other people to look at. And he doesn't want that. Because God says when he looks at the marriage, he looks at how he connected with his church. So he doesn't want you to have a beautiful marriage because it represents God. He doesn't want you to submit to your supervisor at work because he understands that you will be blessed, that you will have peace, that you may can get a promotion. Submission is of God. My question is, who are you submitting to? Don't submit to the wrong person. Now, I'm, I'm being, you can't just submit to anybody. You can't submit to everybody. Let me say that. You cannot submit to any and everybody. Absolutely not. Because some people have ill intentions. God didn't tell you to submit to everybody. But he said, if you're going to be in this relationship, if you're going to be in this organization, if you're going to be under this leadership, there are some people that you have to submit to. And God is first and foremost. And some of us, hear me here, have stunted our growth, have prolonged our blessings and breakthrough, and are in the situation we are in right now simply because we do not have a submissive spirit and we have a spirit of rebellion a contentious spirit a conniving spirit and an abusive spirit but god says i need you to be submitted unto me and my word my principles my way so that i can bless you I don't know who this word was for tonight, but I pray that it has blessed you. If it has, share it with somebody, inbox it to somebody, share it on your news feed. Uh, you, can, you can share it and then, and then hide it from your timeline if you want to. But somebody needs to hear this. This is not for me. When I ask you to share these lives, I'm not asking you to share them so I can be popular. This, this is not about me. This is about so, the word, so that the word of God can get out. You have the greatest evangelism, evangelistic tool in your hands right now. And that's the click of a share button. I never ask you to share any of my personal posts. And every post that I post on Facebook, whether it's sports or something about God, I always try to post something uplifting. But I never ask you to share those. If you share those, you share them because you want to. But this right here, I want to encourage you and ask you to share this so somebody can know the importance of submission. And if you don't feel like sharing, just put somebody's name in the comments. Tag somebody in the comments. And just tell them, you need to watch this. You need to hear this. I don't know who this is for, but I pray that it's blessed you. And Father God, I pray that you would help us to be more submitted unto your will. I pray that you would help us to be more submitted unto your ways. I pray that in our moments, of rebellion, of our, of our, in our moments of disobedience, in our moments, Father, in our unsubmitted moments, unsubmissive moments, I pray that you will convict us, pull us back in and correct us and help us to do what it is that you call for us to do. We love you, Father God, and we can't live this life without you. We don't want to do it culture's way. We don't even want to just do it church's way, the church's way. We want to do it your way, Lord God, for your way is what's best for us. Now perfect that which concerns us until we meet again. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may the Lord continue to perfect that which concerns you. Go in peace, serve God. God loves you. And I do too. God bless you. See you all next week. Thank you all for joining. Keep me in your prayers. Amen. God bless you. Amen. If you're in love with God, you ought to submit to him. 
Say, God, whatever you want me to do, I come under your submission. Yeah, I come under your mission. I submit unto you. God bless you. Whatever, whatever you need me, I'll be there.